Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to look at another form of government, government intervention, in this case, a subsidy. And the example that we're going to uh, use is looking at agricultural subsidies, where a domestic government is providing um, funding, uh, subsidies, um, to its farming industry um, to encourage increased production of certain primary commodities, perhaps wheat, corn, barley, oats, cotton, milk, etc. And this can be done for food security concerns or national security concerns to ensure that a domestic nation is able to produce enough food to feed its own population and not being dependent on other nations for its food supply. Um, in the case of the United States, the United States does subsidize its farmers. We have an example here after the September 11th attack, um, $16.5 billion of government funding towards agricultural subsidies. And if we look at this chart, we can see which commodities are being subsidized. We can see that corn by far receives the most uh, farming subsidies in 2005 with cotton um, in second place, soybean, wheat, tobacco, dairy, rice, and peanuts. Uh, we're going to look at a per unit subsidy, and we can see these per unit subsidies being applied in 2018. In the case of corn, for each bushel of corn produced by farmers, they get a loan of $1.95. Uh, for cotton, for each pound, $0.52. Cents. For wheat, $2.94 per bushel. So this is a per unit subsidy. So how can we graph and illustrate the effect of a subsidy on market outcomes and on stakeholders. So here we have graph A, our market for corn. We're looking at the US market. We have our downward sloping demand curve labeled D1 equal to our marginal benefit. And we have an upward sloping supply curve according to the well supply labeled S1 equal to our marginal costs of production. We wanna keep in mind that corn is a primary commodity. And we have learned in previous videos that the price elasticity of demand for primary commodities is typically less than one, right? Where the percent change in price is greater than the percent change in quantity demanded. And that's a result of uh, food manufacturers demanding corn as a key input, and there's no close substitute. Thus, it's an inelastic demand curve. Again, keep in mind that this is an input market. In terms of the supply, the PES is also less than one due to length of time. Again, percent change in price being greater than the percent change in the quantity supplied. So even though my supply and demand curves are not vertical, as would be expected for inelastic uh, demand supply curves, we're just keeping that in mind and illustrating as such um, so that we can see how to graph, uh, graph this. So we always start off with supply and demand. We're in the free market. And the free market allows for the supply curve to equal the demand curve, which provides the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity, where the quantity supply equals the quantity demanded at QE. We'll also notice that at QE, the marginal costs of production are equal to the marginal benefit Thus, it's allocatively efficient. So we are, the free market is producing the combination of goods, or in this case, the quantity of corn desired by, um, um, desired by society. Okay? And then the government steps in. And they apply a per unit subsidy to corn. So we're just marking that on our quantity axis, we're it's the quantity um, being produced in terms of bushels, right? Quantity produced. So the government provides a per unit subsidy or per unit subsidy for each bushel generated by the farmer. And that would cause the supply curve to shift out by the amount of the subsidy. So let's say it shifts out to S2 here. 
And we can label S2 as being equal to S1 minus the value of the per unit subsidy. So the subsidy has the effect of shifting the supply curve outward by the amount of the subsidy. We can also say it has shifted it down. It's reduced uh, cost of production by the amount of the subsidy. Okay. And since it's a per unit subsidy, it shifts out in parallel to the original supply curve. So that creates a new equilibrium, we can say, at point B. Okay, here we are at point B. And at that point, we have a new equilibrium uh, price, which I will label TC, because that will be the price that consumers will pay. This allows for consumers to pay less for corn as a result of the subsidy. Farmers produce along their original supply curve, and then they can subtract the subsidy for each unit that they produce, so they can sell at a lower price. And that gives them a, a bit, uh, an ability to compete against farmers around the world that have lower costs of production and thus lower prices. And then we see that the quantity supply demanded increases from QE to, I'll call it, quantity with the subsidy, quantity sub, okay? Now, what does the producer receive? Well, they receive the subsidy, right? They will sell to consumers at this price, but they get to keep the subsidy. We're gonna assume that being the case. And that allows their total revenue to also increase. So here, we can see the price received by producers rises from PE to price received by producer or PP. Okay, so keeping in mind again that the subsidy has the effect of reducing the price for consumers from PE to PC and raising the uh, price received by producers from PE to PP. Okay, great. So we need, now need to label a few areas and I can also label this point which may assist us in our analysis. So the labeling, all right, we're gonna label Actually, let me just uh, create a little bit of space here. I'm going to say that's point A. The we'll label is A, lowercase a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And I guess I'm going to have to also label, let's see here, uh, this area. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and it looks like I will have to label that area J, okay? So now we can begin to analyze and evaluate the impact of this subsidy. So first, let's begin to analyze this as we would for an ID paper exam. As can be seen, we have uh, a graph labeled graph A, which is the market for corn. In the United States, it is an input market, corn being a primary commodity, where it's PED, and its PES are less than one. Uh, we are assuming first that we're operating in the free market where S1 equals D1, which provides an equilibrium price at PE and an equilibrium quantity at QE where the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded. We can also see that at quantity equilibrium, the marginal costs of production are equal to the marginal benefit. Thus it is allocatively efficient. We are producing and consuming the quantity of corn that is desired by society. But then the government intervenes and applies a per unit subsidy to the production of corn. That has the effect of increasing the supply curve. Right? It rises, or it increases, I should say, from S1 to S2, S2 being equal to S1 minus the value of the subsidy. And that creates a new equilibrium where S2 equals D1. And at that intersection, we see that the price has fallen for consumers from PE to PC. And we see that the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded have both increased from QE to quantity at subsidy. All right, great. So now we can begin to evaluate this. 
What is the impact on various stakeholders by providing this per unit subsidy um, to farmers? All right, so let's look at number one. Let's look at the impact on consumers. Okay, consumers are positively impacted. They're, they are better off with the per unit subsidy. Why? Because the price for them falls. It falls from PE to PC. So the price paid by consumers has decreased, and thus we would expect that their consumer surplus would increase. So consumer surplus, I'll just label abbreviated as CS, before the subsidy was equal to areas A plus B. And then the consumer surplus after the subsidy is applied is equal to areas A plus B plus G plus F plus E. So greater consumer surplus. So we can visualize that. Here we can see that originally, oops, originally the producer surplus ran along the demand curve to the equilibrium price. Here we see that triangular area, A plus B. And then it increases because the price has fallen. So we follow the demand curve down to the new price created by the subsidy at PC. And we can see that significant increase in consumer surplus going from a, A plus B to A plus B plus G plus F plus E, as we see here. So consumers are better off. You can also highlight the impact on consumer spending. Consumer expenditure, consumer spending, let's say before, was equal to PE times QE price equilibrium times quantity equilibrium. And then after, it's now equal to the price paid by the consumer multiplied by an increased quantity, quantity sub, All right? So to illustrate that, we can uh, see, we, I'll use this. Originally, the, quant the consumer spending was this area. And then it increases to this area, right? So the consumer expense spending has changed. We don't know which one is greater. We don't know the elasticities of these curves. We don't know the exact quantity, so we can't measure this. Uh, so I will not state whether it's increased or not, but we can just see that it, it has changed. All right, so let's now look at producers. How have they been impacted? Well, they have, will have been positively impacted by this because they're gaining revenue from the government. So two, oops, producers. They benefit with the subsidy, right? Why? Because the price received rises from, for them. It goes from PE to price received by producer. And in addition, we can highlight that their producer surplus before the subsidy was equal to, um, here we are, G and H, equal to areas G plus H. And then the producer surplus after the subsidy is applied is equal to G, H, B, and C. G plus H plus B plus C. So they are clearly better off. So originally, we follow the uh, supply curve up to the free market equilibrium price. This was the original producer surplus. And now it has increased. We follow the uh, supply curve up to price received by a producer. And now we, have, we can see the um, increase in the producer surplus as a result. So it goes from G plus H to GH plus B and C. So again, they are better off. And in addition to that, we can talk about total revenue. Total revenue before, I'll call it total revenue one, was equal to PE times QE 
and then it increases to total revenue two, which is equal to price received by the producer multiplied by the increased quantity at Q sub. So that means that originally the total revenue was this area here, price times quantity, and then it increases to a higher price multiplied by a greater quantity. So total revenue has definitely increased for the producer as, and the producer surplus has also increased. So they are clearly better off again because total revenue two is greater than total revenue one. So they are better off. Another stakeholder, we can look at workers in the agricultural industry. They are also positively impacted. Third stakeholder, workers within the agricultural industry or within the corn industry are also better off because since firms or farmers have increased their quantity supplied from QE to quantity at sub, firms can employ more resources, more factors of production like workers. So unemployment in the corn industry falls. So workers are positively impacted. All right, so overall it looks like subsidies are great, but we must take into account the impact on um, the government. So our fourth stakeholder, if I remember, this is correct. One, two, three, four, I think. Uh, we're looking at the government. And we're going to see that they are negatively impacted because they have to pay for it. The government must provide, um, they must use tax revenue and spend uh, on providing this subsidy. And that generates an opportunity cost for the government. They've lost the opportunity to spend that tax revenue on other public goods and services. Okay, what is the value of the spending? It's equal to right, the government spending on the provision of the subsidies equal to areas B plus C plus D plus G plus F plus E. Let's see if I got all of them. B, C, D, G, F, E, okay? So it's this rectangular area here. This is the amount of government spending. B, C, D, G, F, E. B, C, D, G, F, E. And that is also equal to, we can state that that is equal to, parentheses, price received by the producer minus the price paid by the consumer because the value of the subsidy is between these amounts uh, multiplied by the number of units produced with the subsidy, which is a quantity sub, okay? So the government is worse off in this extent, but we can argue that the government may gain political support from consumers because they pay a lower price. They may gain political support from farmers because their total revenue has increased, their producer surplus increased. We can also state that workers within the corn industry may be supportive of this political, uh, of this policy and support the government. Um, so the government may benefit in those ways. Next, we need to look at uh, allocative efficiency. All right, so looking at allocative, all right, we'll see that this is allocatively inefficient. Why? Because at the new quantity, at quantity subsidy, we see that the marginal cost of producing this quantity of corn is greater than the marginal benefit. That leads to an over allocation. Okay, of resources to the production and consumption of corn. So that would create a welfare loss, which we'll see by area D. In area D, we can see that at quantity sub, here I'm touching 
the, the supply curve. So here we can see that the marginal cost is greater than, here I'm touching the demand, the marginal benefit. So D represents the over allocation. Uh, and this causes too much food being produced. And imagine all of the tax revenue being spent on producing more food than is needed by society and uh, how that money could have been used for other public goods and services and the opportunity cost of that. Okay. Um, some students may ask, you, you know, about this overlap. Well, the overlap is um, sort of looking at this government spending on the subsidy and how this government spending, like a pie, let's imagine it's a pie, is being cut and given to the different consumers and producers. So out of this rectangular area, government spending this amount, and then they cut a slice of this pie, areas B and C, and they give it to the producer. And then they cut areas G, F, and E, and give it to the consumer for the increased consumer surplus. And then a piece of the pie is left over, this is the level of waste, or the welfare loss, which is area D. Okay, so welfare loss is equal to area D. Okay, one last uh, stakeholder that we can mention are foreign corn producers. They are negatively impacted. Foreign corn producers are negatively impacted. Perhaps they have what we call the comparative advantage in the production of corn. They may have lower cost of production and thus should be exporting their corn to countries like the United States, but they're exporting not as much as they could because the subsidy has increased domestic production, which robs foreign corn producers of the ability to provide this quantity to the American society. So foreign corn producers may be negatively affected and later in international economics, if the U.S. was to dump the quantity from QE to Q sub into the foreign corn industry, that would reduce the global price and again have a negative effect on foreign corn producers because the price has fallen. That's something that we can talk about once we get to international economics. Okay, And that's it. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.